Cap Close Outdoors with yours truly. It is April 7th, 2023. It is Good Friday. So, happy Good Friday to you. We are in deep right now, let me tell you. We are in the middle of some Pennsylvania public land on an absolute whim trip trying to find native brook trout as part of our little spring fishing opportunity videos here on the channel. So in the last video, you watched us catch some stocked trout, which is a huge part of the Pennsylvania fishing tradition. Uh, people flock to camps and streams that are being stocked with trout, rainbows, brooks, and brownies alike, uh, so people can get in on some fish in action, can rejoin with friends and family, and ultimately, years of tradition. But there are more fish in Pennsylvania than just the stock trout game. And we're actually on the hunt for some native trout. And what that does is it takes us into some freakishly deep, dark forests that have basically remained unchanged for the last 200 years of existence. Most of what you see us do here on the channel is fish and hunt around farmland patches of hardwoods that are disturbed through human use at least a little bit over the course of the last hundred years whether it be for hunting cultivating whatever it may be but where we're at right now this is public land there's a lot more conifers i'm seeing some cool weather or cool climate tree species like white pines and eastern hemlocks and what we're actually on the hunt to do is we are trying to find a class one native brook trout stream so when i say a class one native brook trout area these are streams that are extremely cold water have incredibly high oxygen content and typically are elevationed higher than the surrounding area so pollution does not affect them in a direct point source way quite as badly. And the native brook trout, which is a Pennsylvania uh, icon, it's the state fish, can only exist in waters of this health. So we're actually trying to get down into one of these class one streams to see if we can catch brook trout, although not big, on some native forage that they coexist with. So, we're driving through this game land right now, uh, very dark, very deep, and we're gonna get to our little spot and then we'll talk about the situation at hand and how we're gonna try to get these native brookies for you. So we've made it to this spot and immediately I'm here in running water, which is incredible. So let's go take a look at what we got here. All right, so here's our first little stream. It doesn't look like much, but I'll tell you what, this is what brook trout need to survive right here. This is as narrow, clean, cold water as you're gonna get. And this creek is coming out of a primary source higher upstream up into those uh, big woods there. So we're just gonna kind of explore it out. I know there's a connection between creeks downstream here. And honestly, I think this is as good a spot as you're gonna get for brook trout. So we're gonna throw the vest on and we're gonna try a couple different things. 
uh, in order to try to catch these trout. We'll take a couple rods with us, but this is crazy. This is big woods trout fishing. This is some exciting stuff, and I can't wait to see what we get into here. We're gonna take the spinning rod here uh, in order to use, you know, power bait if the situation calls for it, kind of like we did on those stocked fish. But we're also gonna tie the fly rod up. And what we're gonna tie for this is we're gonna throw on, for now, we're just gonna throw on a small little dual nymph type setup. So we're gonna throw a really tiny, teeny weeny little lure just a little wet nymph and then underneath it we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna tie another little fly out of the fly box here we're gonna tie a bead headed pheasant tail just looks like the larvae that are found with these class A streams so this sucker looks like a little mayfly larva that's very common in these cold water ecosystems so we're actually gonna tie him on second once we tie this little guy on here now the thing about these little brook trout that you're gonna find out is even though we're tying on a small little lure, these fish are extremely aggressive if you find them. They will eat just about anything you throw at them. But the key is to not be seen. So I'm actually wearing a different color sunglass. I'm wearing amber lenses, which are better for seeing in brown water. And right now the majority of the woods is brown, so we're going real light, real, real finesse with these flies because we know that these little trout are going to eat basically whatever we throw at them if we find them. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to see where the confluence between this little creek and the bigger creek uh, occurs and see how fishable it is. And if that is a fishable spot i think that's a great place to start just because it's so well known that trout love eddy currents where creeks and rivers meet it's not far from where we parked the truck here so should be an ideal spot to find trout it's frosty this morning about 30 degrees right now That is iron. What the hell is that all about? Oh, that orange water there. This little run's got iron in it, which is not an ideal situation for trout. That water's pretty acidic. <clears throat> but we're gonna find out real quick if there's fish in here or not. Of all the things which could have went wrong while looking for wild populations of brook trout, finding iron-laced streams is about the worst possible scenario for us. This iron ore comes out of the ground when disturbance due to mining, railroad construction, and other groundbreaking procedures by humans reveal large tracks of iron ore to the surface of our earth where water and air oxidize it. This iron actually pulls oxygen out of the water and that makes it unbreathable for fish and other aquatic organisms. We fly fish in order to emulate the bugs that these trout are trying to feed on, which is their primary diet. But if there is acidic water, there's gonna be very, very few mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies like we're emulating to use to catch trout. And that, despite how beautiful the ecosystems in these areas may appear, the water quality will never be right for wild brook trout, which need cold, oxygenated water and the bugs which go with them. All in all, this was a disappointing find, not an encouraging one, geographically speaking. Yeah, proof's in the pudding here, guys. Look at this. This is not what I was expecting. That's a iron deposit come from who knows where and it's just streaking up and down this pasture whatever that is that is some orange water wow that right there is some stagnant stagnant water and that ain't gonna have trout in it so 
I can see there's old pipelines, railroad ties, all kinds of stuff here. So an acidic stream like this, laced with this iron oxide, ferrous oxide, ain't gonna have trout. So we came all the way out here just to find out that the water quality here is probably contaminated. So for the trout, not a good place to be. So we're gonna try to get ahead and above the confluence of the last creek, or perhaps run up into the next creek in order to try to find a place where we can find some brook trout and the water quality they need to survive in these Pennsylvania woodlands. days after we were last uh, out trying to catch those native brook trout and we failed the environmental conditions just were not there and I hate to say it but it's the human ecological footprint that we left on this area through the railroad ties and acid mine drainage which is keeping trout from being available where we wanted them to be but we're not giving up that easy so upon further research the creek that we were trying to catch trout on was an outflow creek of the actual tributary which is known to have brook trout in it so I'm actually right back out on those same game lands trying to find these trout once again but rather than going down to where we were down in the bottoms where the old railroad track and all that iron ore is seeping up to the surface we're getting higher up we're a higher elevation above that outflow creek where the acid mine drainage is not prominent and it does not drain into the watershed. And this is the class one trout stream that I was researching and originally trying to find. And the fact of the matter is we were on that creek but we spent two minutes walking past it heading to what ended up being just what looked like greener pastures. We went to bigger water thinking that there'd be more fish and it just turns out that there was more pollution and less reason to actually find fish. So we're gonna try getting north of these fish a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna get on the tributary class one stream, which is also known as a feeder stream. This is like a stream's come right out of the mountains and it's fed by mountain springs there's no lake that feeds this there's no bigger river that feeds this creek this is an original creek if you will and we're gonna go try to uh, get up into that watershed's headwater in order to find these trout in the same area once again Traveling into these parcels of public land for native brook trout is like stepping back in the Pennsylvania timeline. The white noise of the Industrial Revolution is not present. Our tackle for fishing is more primitive as we go in with a dropper fly setup, and the streams themselves are more remote than even a map can give you justice to. We are truly walking into an unknown piece of territory, and it will take us about a mile and a half to get to our spot. And for such a small fish, it seems like there wouldn't be as much value in this kind of fishing as there would be work. But our trip is goal-oriented. The adventure is worth its weight, not knowing what you're going to find at the other end of the treasure map. But the other thing is, this might be a spot that nobody other than us ever lays eyes on, whether there are fish or not. And if there are fish present, this is a map that's going to be buried forever in the sands, other than our imagination. Wow. This is exactly what we were looking for, guys. Wait till you see this stream. Guys, check this stream out. Wow. 
This is incredible. These are just boulders in the middle of this game land running down through these high mountain peaks on either side of us. And there's just waterfalls and riffles and that water is clearer than glass. This is amazing. This is exactly what we wanted to find for finding these native trout. And now it's just a matter of if they're gonna bite here or not. So we're gonna hit up all these pools up here uh, and just keep moving upstream. And then we might even go downstream a little bit and see what it looks like. But these big pools, this is what the doctor ordered for finding brook trout. So we've got our little dual fly set up here. We have a little nymph with a bead head and then a little dry fly parachute atoms indicator above it. That way we can see if a trout sucks in our lure, but this is incredible. Let's get fishing. In a sense, although we're not keeping any fish, catching native brook trout is more of a harvest than it is a hunt. However, stealth is of utmost need when stocking up on these low, clear water bodies as such. These trout are apex predators in their ecosystems under the water, but above the water, they're on the menu for everything else. So it's important that these fish stay hidden, even though they'll be opportunistic toward food. And as anglers, we need to make sure that we stay in the shadows, move slow, and make perfect casts in some of the deeper holes where these fish want to reside. That's the equation we need if we want to have success. Oh my gosh! Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's beautiful. Look at that fish. Oh my god, this thing's huge. This is a huge native. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. I am shocked. Guys, I don't want to spend too much time because I want to get more fish and I want to let him go. But this native brook trout, this is what we came into this creek to catch. Absolutely pummeled it. King of the hole for sure. That's a beautiful fish. Unbelievable. I am shocked and I am so happy that we were able to get one. Wow. What a gorgeous little fish. All right, little buddy. We're going to send you on your way. But thank you. You have made our day. Another, oh, 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 another native brookie. Wow, there we go. Another native brook. That one ain't as locked jaw as the last one was, but still freaking pretty as could be. Pretty as a picture. Those are two stud brook trout. Riffle by riffle, hole by hole. We hit up the stream, heading upstream and downstream. And essentially, as long as we stay hidden, like we mentioned, these fish are willing to eat. But one of the big things that we can take away from this trip is that as long as the environmental conditions are healthy for brook trout, clean water, 
pollution limited, and food plentiful, you're going to have these fish to enjoy. And even though this trip in itself was kind of a challenge to make happen, the fact of the matter is finding fish as we have in this type of creek is no easy feat. So we relish every fish that we've had the opportunity to catch with the utmost respect toward the animals and the opportunity for what it is. Oh, beautiful little fish. We're gonna let him go now. Nice. There's a trout. Look at that. Like clockwork. Just another beautiful native brookie. Look at all the red spots on that one. Oh, what a beautiful morning it's been. This is a completely different landscape than where we were fishing the other day. We got beautiful, beautiful specimens of Pennsylvania state fish, wild and native, coming out of these little creeks, uh, running out of these mountain ranges which have been here as long as the state has existed. There's no more trialed and true fishing when it comes to trying to represent Pennsylvania's most naturalistic style of fishing in this little brook trout adventure, I think symbolizes that. And I'm kind of at a loss of words. I didn't expect this video to go as well as it did. Catching honker seven, eight inch brook trout trophies out of these cricks on flies. Just a little parachute atoms and nothing else. This is about as basic as it gets. But the one thing I do want to stress is that these landscapes are an endangered species. As you clearly saw, just a half a mile downstream here is where that convergence between the older south branch of this creek and then the primitive first class run that we're fishing now meet. And just because of the presence of one chemical, iron ore seeping up from the soil, trout were nowhere to be found. But up here in these more clean, pristine, runs where hemlocks and gray birch still line the banks like these forests did when settlers first got to Pennsylvania. The water is pristine and a fish that used to be extremely widely distributed still thrives to a degree. So it's up to us to make sure we take care of these landscapes, these cool water, heavy forested areas. I'm probably one of the only people who might ever see some of these trout that were caught today. That's the reality of it. We had to go about a mile and a half to get off a road, wilderness area at that, to get to this creek to catch these specific fish. There's a very high likeliness we might be the only ones who ever get to experience what you saw today. So keep that in mind. These landscapes, they're ours. This is public land, which is great because this is the second time I've brought you a native brook trout video on this channel where we were exploring the public lands that your tax dollars as Pennsylvania residents and fishing license owners go towards protecting. But if we don't stay cognizant of how pristine these waters are, these brook trout might disappear with these ecosystems one day. Whether it be due to pollution, warming water, water disturbance, whatever it might be. Let's take care of these landscapes and I hope this video made you want to protect these wild wilderness areas a little bit more in our beautiful state. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Captain Coastal Outdoors. Like and subscribe. Till next time, she's Trey, stay strong. That's it. I'll see you on the next set of catches.